Okay, hello and uh, welcome back to MD Model Works in association with our Clag 2. Right, first thing I would advise is someone or anybody who's watching this to get yourself a nice comfy chair because this review is going to be a big one. Um, we first saw this beautiful Hellcat, Airfix Hellcat at Telford last year it was unveiled to be honest I was a little bit disappointed it isn't what I expected we were all looking for a new tool Vulcan or what have you something different everyone's looking for something different nobody expected the Hellcat that I know of anyway <clears throat> uh, I've seen I did have a look at the Hellcat at the, the Hellcat at Telford didn't take a lot of notice didn't look at it that closely at the time but it's grown on me since anyway I've had this kit since about nine o'clock this morning from Hannant's when I got the phone call so thank you to AD at Hannant's for giving me a bell um, then we better get into it because this is going to be a longie it could be an hour plus so please bear with me I know it's a long video but hopefully it'll be worthwhile Anyway, tonight's review. The 124th Grumman F6F5 Hellcat. Your box number is A19004. And the box is Mahusive. It's the same size as the Typhoon, uh, which I have proudly sitting up there, which I built a couple of years ago for Telford. And I'm going to build this one for Telford this year so when you come along come along the old class stand hopefully you'll find this there finished and have a look at that see what you compare it with right without any further ado let's get into it and have a look so we've got a beautiful picture I presume I believe that's a zero it's just shot down so we're back into action photos we've got another zero bank around at the top I can't see a signature on the artwork anywhere <clears throat> excuse me we even got a little bit of information on the top here this time where it says October the 24th 1944 the Battle of Lake Gulf in the Pacific Lieutenant Carl Allen Brown Jr. a member of the VF 27 flying F6 F5 paper doll from the USS Princeton was shot down five enemy Zeeks so it is a zero before evading a further four that were competing to shoot him down his machine was damaged and he was wounded, but Brian was able to land safely on the USS Essex after Princeton was sunk. So we've even got a little bit of information on the front of the box. Nice touch airfix, like it. Right, let's have a look. I'm going to have to just hold this down because I've got the widest angle lens that I've got for this box. We've got some beautiful pictures of the aircraft, which I presume was the one that was built for the James May program. Very detailed. The ends are just the same, same photograph, just a little bit more detail. And we here we on this side. Blimey, it's heavy old box. We have our four. Let's get you in. The, the four decal uh, versions that we have, which is 1944, 1945, or two at 45, and a French one, I believe, by the looks of that. So you've got two American, a British Fleet Air Arm, and a French one, which very nice. That's a bit different. Quite impressed with that. Okay, right. Now, show you that the box hasn't been opened. She's still tight. I haven't looked in this. Like I said, I had it since 9 o'clock this morning, and I have been sitting on my hands because I want to open it and look but I want to wait till tonight so open the tabs six tabs please bear with me and see what's in the box the box is extremely heavy 
you out a little bit just for a moment. Uh, get into the box. Blimey. Uh, that's not disappointing at all. So, massive box, just like the Typhoon. Everything is rammed. The box is totally rammed full of plastic. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So, what I'll do, I'll put the box to a side. We'll get the instructions and have a look through and see what they say. I presume the instructions are going to be like War and Peace itself. Massive. There we go. Right, let's get you back to stuff and what might be normal ish. So, right, first thing I notice. So I haven't opened this kit and straight away we notice that the decal sheet has been creased right along the roundels which is a shame but we'll have a look and see if there's any damage that book is heavy as anything very heavy Right, go in the bin. Okay, we'll put the. Let's have a quick look at these. Yep, we've got damage on the decals for the Royal Navy version. So, there's the first issue. Not impressed with that. As you can see, there's damage there. But, um,. I know Sean Middleton at Top Notch is doing insignias for this, so that's an easy way to cover that. Get hold of Sean, get yourself some uh, insignia masks. Right, these all look that aside. Let's have a look, see what we've got. Okay. Looking at all these, the carrier film is very tight to the decal, which is nice. Everything is really, these numbers have no carrier film whatsoever around it, which is terrific. The only carrier film I can see is the carrier film in between the, the insignia bars, the bar and the star. It's not stars and bars, it's the bar and star, just here. So, very nicely done, but they are very, very glossy, although the, the actual aircraft was obviously um, in glossy blue which I did a um, version of for Alclad just try to find it, it's here um, oh there we go, US Navy Sea Blue although this is a matte and obviously we'll gloss it up with Alclad Aqua Gloss Alk 600 so that will be fine these are extremely they're glossy, very glossy but we'll see. Again, very disappointed about that, which is a bit of a shame. But we'll put that on the side. So I'll put that away. Now, this is a book. This isn't an instruction leaflet. This is a book. So we're going to run through it quickly. We have sections here. Let's bring the light down a little bit. Dudley's seen someone. Right, so we've got a usual bits about study the drawings, practice assembly. If you're a modeler and been a modeler for a few years, you'll do that anyway. So we can have wings unfolded and the carriage up, wings unfolded and the carriage down, which is how I will build it, because I've got the room to store it. Wings folded and the carriage down. Pretty, but not my cup of tea. I, I spoils it to my opinion. There you go. Anyway, then you've got the fittings and mini panels that cover the engine is optional so obviously we have the engine shown fantastic love it I'll have the engine shown I did that with the Tamiya Spitfire my 30 second Spitfire loved it okay so there is the option as um, James asked me oh sorry Cameron asked me earlier today could we fit a motor in it the answer Cameron is yes we can it's there
it gives you the option to fit the motor for the propeller and it fits inside the engine no sweat okay then you've got your call outs um, Humbrol call it gloss midnight blue it's actually US Navy sea blue but there you go uh, plenty of call outs all in Humbrol so we'll ignore that completely being the fact that I'll use L clads on the whole build okay so I'm looking through so we start as per usual in the cockpit area ribbon going on to the base of the cockpit you've got your joystick go on in uh, excuse me and then joining on to the base you've got the bulkhead with your pattern and your armor plate going on the rear oxygen bottle I would presume tabs handles going on you've got your rudder pedal area going in the bulkhead joining to the base you have to go through this really quickly because of everything pipe work going in um, the front bulkhead joining with the rudder pedals going down and it says use one half of the fuselage to set the correct angles use it as a jig again great work looking through again you've got more areas going down this is the center console that goes in between the rudder pedals you've got the seat going together it looks like you have got your seat belts all there or we'll have a look I look like they're plastic seat belts I hope they're thin enough that's all I worry about then we come along your seat going into the cockpit area your shoulder belts going down or your harnesses going down I always call that handbrake, I know it isn't, but your quadrants going in, different parts going on, sidewalls being started and going into the fuselage, it shows you how to do this each side, then you put your cockpit section in, excuse me, trim tab wheel going on, can it be released going in, another bulkhead with a fuel tank going on to there. Gives you all the correct colours. Someone's taking the wheel bin in. More plating going down. Uh, your arrestor hook area being built and going into the rear section with more bulkheads. I like the way they're building this so far. It's looking good. It's been very, very detailed. Okay, your radio going together or your radio set going together. And again, another radio section going in. And going across and up and into the fuselage you've got your compass going in then we're talking about the it looks like it's a decal unit um, I believe the typhoon the decals went on the back of a perspex area then that slid into the front area great way to do it and a great way to be able to paint it with your compass going on your fuselage with the, with the um, instrument panel going together and going onto it Right, the, the starboard sidewall going together, more instrumentation going on, and it's asking, it's all decals, it's referring to position of decals on there. You've got another part of the instrument panel going on the side. You've then got the rest of the area behind the fuselage going in, and that goes onto the fuselage there, depending on whether it's got external top to take out parts there for the external um, fuel tank bringing the fuselage together it does say if your preference is to attach the towel before closing the fuselage in this step please refer to the build assembly option on page 61 so if you want to build um, normally we put the um, undercarriage on after we've built the kit to stop it getting broken or snapped off when we're painting but um, there's obviously an option where you can put it on later as well you can put it on here we've got a belly plate going on a bit more uh, bulkhead work going on in the back you can actually keep the hatch open which is perfect anything you can open it up to see inside there is wonderful you've got the bottom of the fuselage there going there we we'll presume the wings will go through uh, I presume these are wing plates um, to hold the wings in place you've got open your holes up for your bombs you've got your wing spar that goes across 
yeah these are parts here I, that's brilliant the way they're doing this I love this instruction manual so far it's so easy to follow even someone as idiotic as me can do it go on across again and more wing spars or strengthening points to go across smaller parts going in to help the wings um, be completed we've then got our hubs which are in one two three four five five including the tires fantastic parts so that's for the wheels up wings going on looking very very nice again drilling more holes out for the bombs which we spoke about in the last parts more strengthening parts going in and again this is obviously for wheels down this is for yeah this is the wheels down version that part we just looked at was the wheels up so this is wheels down whether folded or not but it does tell you keep an eye on the instructions unfolded or folded parts of the wings just keep an eye on what you're doing this is very very detailed and it's going to be a fantastic kit but it's going to be up there if this was a revel it would be level 10 so just you know keep an idea what you're doing um, your gun racks go on in with strengtheners for the wings and parts that take the ammo your guns going in there I know I'm going over different parts but this is such a big instruction manual I mean we're on page 19 now and there's 63 pages other parts go on in like your guns your muzzles very detailed ammo boxes very very nice and going in it looks like your um, ailerons are gonna be sorry yeah ailerons are gonna be um, movable looking at this more parts going together which is part of the wing construction to join the wing together same for the right hand side these are doubled up this is for everything and if you look at the top here you'll just be able to see hopefully you've got up wings up so anything that's got these air it's for the all the setup for the each of the three various versions you can do so this is the left wing exactly the same again doing exactly the same thing excuse me um, more flat work going down sorry these are for the flat for the flat down excuse me both sides when we're bringing the um, they're asking you to put the top of the wings on first yeah, the top of the wings on first on top of that section that we built earlier. And looking at the way that goes, that's going to be different. Let's say that now it goes together. Hello, got different colour, got green. Right. These are for sliding fits. They could be cut off by the looks of it. And so on. More parts as your um, identification lamp going in on the right and the left another other side going in of the wing section putting it all together get it together there and there we go the full wing again now personally I'm going to have these up because I'm going to super detail all in here and we'll get that sorted it looks really really nice so far and we're looking along yeah and then we bring in the fuselage onto the wing section should be a nice easy fit onto it you have got your identification lights on the port side and sorry the port side starboard side all going in Dudley's making a heck of a lot of noise tonight I do apologize more little parts going on detail work going in another section of the wing going on this is for the wings up so it's all the same, it's just these are different sections. Everything going in the same here. Just looking at here, your flaps going down. Obviously, the flaps will be up when the wings are folded. Same section going in. I know I'm flicking through this quite quickly, but I don't want to bore the heck out of you. Again, the flaps can be. He's saying that the flaps can be out. Um, extended when the wings are up which is fair enough 
Okay. Same again. If you want to even leave the bays open when the wings are folded, not a problem. Okay, so we're on to the fuel tank, another fuel tank. We've got our radiator assembly going in, and that's fitting onto the bottom of the wing section with the to the bulkhead. We've got our tail section going together here. Obviously all movable by the looks of it. Fantastic again. Your rudder, again looking at that, it's movable, but I would imagine that they're stud that they're, they're sturdy and they're in there. So that's fine. I'll just take you out a little bit. That's it. Okay. Now, then we start on the one thing that we all know which is beautiful on this kit, and I did look at this bit at Telford, I must admit, is the engine. This bit we don't do, so Cameron, don't do 150. Because <laughs> this is the bit you need to avoid if you're going to put the motor in. And we go on, so we've got the cylinder section, we've got the ignition and the injector section going on. Then we've got the cylinders, sorry, going together. Put it together. We've then got our injector units again at the front going on. There are just multiple and multiple and multiple of this. Um, now even Art says on this part, if you wish to add ignition leads to the engine, it is recommended to use 0.7 millimeter copper wire and follow the diagrams below. So they even give you a wiring diagram if you wish to do it. This is not your standard airfix kit. This is on another level. For them to give you this information without having to study pictures and everything else, that is fantastic. So, more work going on the engine, more pipe work going in, more and more parts going on. I don't know, I, I love aircraft. Do I know everything about them? No, I'm being honest here. I just some of this stuff is just fantastic the detail level just of this engine is worth the money okay so more pipe work going in this is just looking at different parts and it's starting to blow me away a little bit I must admit different parts coming into the engine section more pipe work going on um, more pipes going into the front to make it connect to the rear. Looking at this again, it just—it's hard to describe how good this engine looks. Just on the drawings, on the CAD work drawings, it's just spot on. If my engine looks anything half as good as this when it's done, I'll be very, very happy. I mean, that is a model in itself. That is worth the hundred pounds this kit costs just for that engine. If it's as good moulded, we ain't seen it moulded yet, we'll see. Okay, so more stuff going on, different parts going in, another section which houses the rear of the engine, and again the chambers going on, expansion chambers. More parts going together and it just slips in. You've got parts going on to your the engine mounts going in, engine mounts going on to the bottom and how they go in, telling you exactly how they line up. Fantastic. Air intakes, radiator intakes looking good. Coming through, just going through, it's just air intakes after air intake and pipe work. Same difference on here. We're still working on it, that's about 20 pages, just the engine so far. We've got the oil chamber going together, oil can, whatever you want to call it. I'm just a bit overawed at the minute, as you can see. Just fantastic kit going together. You've got your radiator system, which goes on to the top. We keep the oil cooler. Then you come across the front area um, to build up that beautiful section underneath. And again, different parts going together. More pipe work from the um, front of the firewall 
going into the wings absolutely superb although how the heck you're supposed to get them in there unless they go through the wheel bay I don't really know to be truthful so you've got the intercooler going in with the, the support going on to the intercooler you then coming on to um, more radiator areas um, intake areas bottom section going on another part of the height I ain't going to put all these on why we're doing all that detailing what the heck are you going to cover it up for blow that so stuff going on uh, more panels going on more and more panels going on these are just basically outside panels nothing to worry about you got another strengthening piece to go on the top more uh, work to go on the side of the aircraft absolutely beautiful these panels like I said I'm not going to use so I'm not going to gloss over it but they're there but why would you cover that beautiful engine up you need to have it on show at least one side if not both then we come on to the undercarriage now this stuff needs to be strong because this isn't going to be light going by the plastic anyway so undercarriage going in it looks like it's got a very strong bladed area to join into and looking terrific your extension units going on again beautifully done your oleos going together or your compressor units for the oleos going in you've got your uh, undercarriage bay doors going on and then the wheels going together then you make up the rear wheel this is obviously what they talked about earlier so you can put it on a little bit later if you wish I will be I'll be painting the whole thing and then putting it on because you can do that by the looks of it. More flat work going in, more panels. Again, more flaps. Obviously, this is a a carrier-borne aircraft, so the slower the speed, the heavier the flap. Great stuff. The ailerons going on. Just different steps just got to read this is going to be tricky read this instruction manual and get yourself your head together before you start to build this because to be honest everything I've looked at here is different beautiful don't get me wrong but you need to study this this has got to be read and study before you start anything okay bombs going together standard stuff missiles looking good so you can have three rockets, no not missiles, they're rockets on this. Your bomb, thousand pound, five hundred pound bombs going down. You've got your external fuel tank which goes in the centre line, looking good. More glazing going in. Your pito tube going on, then we start on the canopy. Two parts of the canopy, obviously you can have it open and closed, fantastic. Part L47 is for the motor assembly, so that obviously the motor goes into that part, into this piece onto the propeller, through onto the the nose cone. It shows you exactly how to do your radio aerial wire diagram. This is brilliant. Well done FX. Another one notched up. Loving it. And this is for your folded wing sections. You've got the edges to put in. No issues. Really looking lovely. Okay. And then we've got internal deck or position another lovely lovely touch so you've got your instrument panel you've got your radio steps you've got another part of the instrument panel there you've got your side walls you've got more side walls there you've got inside the gun bays you it goes on and on and on on the back of the um, firewall there just goes on and on that book is thick I mean that is really thick um, beautiful so that's the instruction manual right so that took half an hour to flash read through that instruction manual that's crazy okay right here we go again stencil data not that much to be truthful on this side of aircraft this size of aircraft it's not over roaring like say a phantom would be in 124th you're just gonna you're gonna deckle for days but this is just fine it's a day's work 
looks lovely. On that side, can't fault that bit. Then we come on to, oh, let's stop that machine doing that. We come on to our coloured deckling system, which I love. So this is the French version, Into China War, 1953. I quite like this. I might even do this one. This is neat. So you've got your carrier born lights there, thousand pound and and uh, five hundred pound bomb, and you could even do the HVRs, which are the rockets. Gives you an idea of your call lights here. Again, looking great. And we've got Operation Sunfish, Naval Air Squadron, Fleet Air Arm, HMS Khedive, East Indies, March, April 1945, in a beautiful camo scheme, which is matte dark slate grey and satin extra dark sea grey. Yeah, okay. Not my two favourite colours, but we'll get away with that. But I'm not going to do this one. Um... And this is the one with the decals damaged, so I don't... I, you do a Hellcat, it's got to be blue, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> so, that's gorgeous. And here we go. Right, this is VF-12, USS Randolph, CV-15, May 1945. This is more like it. I do love the tail section, the white ailerons superb beautiful I do love that blue colour I've never done one in blue never built an aircraft in blue no that's a lie I did the intruder did I do intruder? Avenger that's it right and this is the one that's featured on the front box which is Paper Doll Carl A. Brown VF27 USS Princeton October 1944 this is the shark's mouth this is the one that most people are going to do so I won't be doing this one. We're going to be doing... I think we're going to do... Where is it? I do like the colours on that one. So we'll go for that one, I think. Right. Now, put that to one side. I'll try to work out the best way to do this. Because I think what I'll do first, I'm going to do the clear parts. Because this is right on top. Now... Airfix have done something for the first time that I've noticed. We've got a poppy bag so we can pop our heart's content and inside that poppy bag is our clear spray wrapped in tissue and never known that before. Not by Airfix anyway. So we're just going to draw them out. Oh heck. <laughs> That is absolutely gorgeous. Let's bring you in to have a look at this, because this is special. And the reason I say it's special is because the detail on here is spot on and incredible. And there's not a single piece of damage on here. Well done Airfix, you got it right. I'm looking at the, these are very thin for the size and there is no distortion at all apart from this top bit, that's a very difficult bit to get right and there's a slight bit of wobble but I'm not bothered because this is going to be back so you're going to see into that beautiful cockpit stunning, that's the only word I can use, stunning So far this is worth the wait and I'm going to pack this straight away, sorry that means you've got to watch me pack a bag away, but that's the way it is I'm afraid with that, that's too good to risk damaging. Bear with me. Blimey, this reviews, I mean it took me half an hour to go through the instruction manual. Right, I'm going to put that to one side. Now, the issue we have 
is that all these frames are doubled up. Now, if I take you right out so you can see what I'm talking about, these frames are the size of the box. So we're going to have to be a little bit. I'm going to do something I wouldn't normally do. But as I'm going to build this kit, and each frame, is there two different frames? They call them frames, not sprues. And yeah, so I'm going to, just going to slip these off because they're going to make it easier to look at. It might take a little longer. Again, I did say it's going to be a long review, but it's going to be worth it. Okay, let's bring you in a little bit more. There we go. Right. So here we have our flaps. First thing I'm going to say, there's not a single, I can't see a single piece of flash on anything apart from a little bit on the sprue. Obviously we're not worried about that in the slightest. The detail, the rivets are fantastic. They're in scale. They look absolutely amazing. That is just incredible. It, even the wing folds don't look chunky. They look, for the scale, they look spot on. And on the rear, again, very, very nice. No ejection pin marks to get in the way so far. There's a little bit of pipe in there and there's nothing to deburr. So there's no join marks. This is starting to be a bit of a spot on kit to me at the moment. The rear tail section, parts of the rudder. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but I'm going to try and bring you right in as much as I can. Excuse the noise from the servo. I don't know if I'll pick that up and bring the That is... To use the word awesome is a well overused word nowadays, but the, the level of detail on there is exquisite. I'm not going to say awesome, it's exquisite. I personally have never seen, even on Tamiya kits, Tamiya, don't get me wrong, I love Tamiya kits, they are the best on the planet. Apart from a few Eddard, obviously, in 148. But this is, there's raised, and I hear this, these are raised rivets, and they are sharp. It's moulded sharply, there's not a hint of flash, I'm loving it. Right, let's get another carrier bag. This has got some of the major parts in it. Again, two sprues in a bag, but they're in one bag. Now we've always asked for Airfix to do, to bag them all separately, and they've done it, they've pleased us, again. This is a kit that seems to give and give. Let's just divide that up so it makes life easier for us to see. So we'll start with the tyres. Two part tyres, the hubs, I mean, the hub is hood. If you look there, that's fantastic. Absolutely gorgeous. Underneath the cowling of the engine, it's just. It's hard to actually define what we're talking about here. Excuse that light, I didn't realise that was there. Um, the level of detail, with, with 124th scale, like their early Spitfires, the super kits that we had when we were kids. I'm actually building a Messerschmitt 109 in between the F-16 that I'm doing. And that is actually for Robert Alclad. And... The level of detail compared, I know we're talking 40, 50 years, 40 years on, but the level of detail on this kit is incredible. I wish they'd do all the super kits again. I'm quite stunned to be honest. Absolutely fantastic. Put that one down. 
and pull this one. Right, we're starting to get in the cockpit area. Even the bottom of the cockpit. Race rivets, fantastic. Lots of detail in there already. You can see just there, absolutely beautiful. Going round again, no flash where it counts, no deburring required. This is well worth the wait. That guy at Airfix who took over Airfix again and went back after a few years after leaving. You've pulled their fingers out, mate. You've done the job. You've created something to be proud of. Right, we've got belts here and they are thin enough to be used so we don't have to buy aftermarket. Again, well done Airfix. I know when I went we visited Airfix when we did Round the World in Lightning um, and I went down there and I met the creator of the Typhoon and I believe he has something to do with this but even this is so much further forward than the Typhoon was it's just an amazing looking piece of there, I mean there was burr on the Typhoon there ain't no burr on this one this is beautiful every piece is glorious there's not flash there's no ejection pin marks in the way typical airfix would be mind you we ain't got the fuselage yet uh, there's a tiny bit of deburring on that but you've got to forgive them for that that's beautiful okay right another bag with two sprues in it Clip has gone. There you go. Try this. this is just ridiculous. This is a kit that keeps giving. Right. Wing strengthening section. I love all this. And this is all going to be open. Sprue gates are tiny. Not tight. They're not on Tamiya's scale where they have perfect sprue gates, but it'll take minimal cleanup. And this is part of the gun bay here and to be truthful the detail on that gun bay is as good as any detail you're going to get in any kit and another one they both side see both sides here are fully detailed but normally airfix will have one two three four ejection pin marks in there there's not one single one the ammo box casings the ammo itself is in there. A dry brush is going to be perfect. The 500 or the 0.5s, Carl's, <laughs> they're crazily good. For something that you could actually cover up and never be seen again, why would you do that? When you've got the option to have these bays open, why would you hide all this beautiful detail? I mean, again, raised rivets the way it should be detail everywhere you look mm. it's very difficult it's difficult not to get overwhelmed that's a copy of the other one and again even the tops of the guns don't really need filing down to get them nice and flat they, they look just everything's there everything's spot on now, here we go with a couple of sprues. Uh, which way is that? That way. Some of the. Now, some of these are really large areas. There. Panels that go on over the engine and around the engine area. Now, these can be left open. So, we'll be looking specifically. For ejection pin marks. Right, here we go. Okay, lift that out a hair. That's quite a big screw. Right, so the outside 
beautiful. I can't say any more than that. It's just gorgeous. On the inside, yes, we have ejection pin marks, which is a little disappointing if you want them open, but nothing that they're not deep. They could either be filed or a bit of Mr. Surfacer or your favourite filler in there. Wipe them down, you'll be fine. Again, a beautiful piece. More engine. That piece is absolutely gorgeous. Everything on here is looking spot on. The radiator's lovely texture. Just, I keep forgetting these sprues are so large, it's hard for you to get the detail and to see the size of the sprue. The rear of the engine is just fabulous. The framework to hold the engine in, again, glorious. A small amount of burn, but hey, I'm not going to complain about that. That's fantastic. Blimey, we've got a double bag here, and we actually got these are actually split off, but hey ho. Not one we ain't got to worry about. Right, so we have on this sprue, we've got our external fuel tanks, our thousand pound and our five hundred pound bombs, and our miss just a little bit of flash on the missile fins or the rocket fins. I'm not going to complain about that. Everything looks beautiful. Everything's lovely. Pardon me. If it does go together as well as it looks, I'll be a happy bunny. And again, we've got another firewall, raised rivets. See, even this part here, let's bring you in. You can see we have, they've all been drilled out. How cool is that? So we ain't got to sit there and drill all these. They're there, they're done. There's good definition on the sidewall areas, your rear air tank. To me, this is looking extreme. I mean, I got excited about that Dragon kit. I say Dragon. It's Ravel 132nd, 110 the other week. This is up there with the detail. Right, there we go again. Another big frame. I'm trying to keep this under an hour, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Bags empty. Slip the frames. Obviously, this will make it easy for you to work with as well. Right, we'll keep that for a second. Our prop. Okay, minimal cleanup required. That's all I'm going to say. She's beautiful. Nice paddle on her. Gear bay doors. The gear is strong, looks good. If you wanted to, you could get some metal gear. You don't need to on this, but look, so this is quite strong. Different little parts. Everything's looking good. Your nose, the prop, which is an important part on this model. All your pipe work, again, fantastic. Very little deburring to do. I can't praise it high enough at the moment. I'm actually in a little bit of shock. Right, this is the part that everybody loves to see. I'll help you out, I'll kick you in. Here we go. Your cylinders. Can you hear that? The detail again is up there with the best that I've ever seen. Front casing for the engine, everything, the gearbox. I want this on the bench tonight. That's how good I think this is. I want it on the bench tonight. It's just phenomenal. Everywhere you look, there's detail. You, you won't see it all in first hit. You need to look at it two or three times to get, just to see how good detail, this, or how much detail there is on this kit. Right, 
I have literally gone from top to bottom on these, so this is how your kit will be packed. So there are going to be sections, Mister. There going to be sections that you're not going to use, i.e., the folded wing sections for me. Or if you fold the wings, you won't use the outer wings. Yeah. Okay. These I've got to say doubled up, but they're not. Stress skin. Something we dealt with quite a while ago. We had a kit come out. I can't remember what it was now, but it was the, one of the. I think it was an an Eddard kit that had stress skin on the rear of the Spitfire. If I remember correctly, this has it, and it is done perfectly. The level of detail on the upper wing is absolutely incredible. There's going to be no ejection pin marks shown where the gun bays go, the centre section. The level. There we go. If we go up. Let's get you in here so you can see it. And you see the level of detail there if you just catch the light. It's just phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. Same on the whole of the wing. Just amazing kit so far. And there's your lower wing and there's your upper wing together with your centre section and again the detail I'm not going to go up again because the detail is just you can actually see the rays in the wing where the stress well, and you can feel it I've never felt a kit like that before perhaps I've missed out in my life I don't know perhaps I'm sad but that the only thing I will say is that's the first bit of bad bit I noticed. Don't know what it's like on the real aircraft, but there's a section I would say a part here where you join stuff to it. Excuse me, I forgot to take you out again. I do apologise. I'll just show you that wing section again, just here. The feeling across here is just off this planet. But if you see here, there's a raised piece. And inside, where that raised piece is, is a connection for where the gun bay goes on. Now, whether that's there in real life, I can't tell you. I haven't studied the aircraft close enough yet to tell you. But that's if that's a flaw, that's the only flaw I've found so far. Right. We have one more bag to go. Because I'm getting the sore throat, talking for an hour. Unlike me, I'm a quiet person, and I can see what I love straight away. Again, the stress skin. I can't overemphasize how good the quality of the molding is. They must have spent thousands on these molds, hundreds of thousands. It is just off the planet. Everything about this kit is fantastic. There's nothing that resembles a 124th kit that Airfix have ever done before, apart from the Typhoon. Oh dear, we've got a little tiny bit of flash on top of the fuselage. Hey ho. That is just incredible. Incredible. And on the inside, the ribbon, the inside of the wheel wells, absolutely superb. The ribbon for the fuselage, fantastic. We're never going to see in here. There are a few little um, ejection pin marks. There's one here and one here, which probably we'll get rid of. One there. When we build up, because we don't want anything to spoil what we're going to be looking at. Once you put a wash in there, they'll all show up, so we won't get that out of the way. One or two, you're not going to see anything, but this ribbon is high, it's strong. And that stress skin look that's a class leader right so let me just put this away for a second put this here I'll bring this back up let's 
Sorry about the lights, I've got four or five lights on. Right, so that was the review of the 124th Grumman F6F5 Hellcat by FX. Final thoughts. If you can't get one, get one. It's a hundred quid. I think a hundred and four I've seen it advertised for today. Uh, um, for trainers, I think it's a little bit more at Hannant's. But looking at that, if this was a Tamiya kit, you'd be looking at £200 plus, in my opinion. Somebody has done their homework, they've looked at the plane, they've studied it, they've got the stress skin perfect, the engine is a dream. You can't tell the engine until you build it, but looking at the photographs on the side, it is an absolute dream. I can't rate this highly enough. I, I don't know what else to say. It is it's a mind blowing kit. Get one. Thanks for watching. Now I've got a sore throat. I need a heart. I need a cup of tea. Goodbye for now. And thank you very much.